What up, y'all? DC Fagel guy. It has been a long ass time since I've done any kind of live stream. It's been a long time since I've done any kind of Fago break. And it is the night before the Hollow Wicked Freak Show, the Traveling Freak Show. I don't, I don't fully know what the uh, the theme of the name is. I've been calling it the Hollow Wicked Tour, and apparently I'm getting everybody confused when I say I'm going to Hollow Wicked. They're like, "Oh shit, you're going to Hollow Wicked in Detroit?" It's like, no, I'm not. But I wanted to do like a, a test stream, kind of. So that's why this totally uh, spontaneous live stream is happening right now and i want to set this down that way i'm not shaking it like crazy it's in the dark simply so that that way i can kind of test i want to see how well the quality is going to be of doing a live stream because um i don't know when i did my live stream of the icp seminar at the gathering i was disappointed with the quality it was like the screen was fuzzy as fuck and everything like that so i just kind of want to I want to I want to test it and see how it does in the dark. That's why I got the black lights on. So just gonna kind of kick it with the chat here, and uh, and just basically test this shit out. You know what I mean? So I do have I do have my window pulled up so I can stick with the chat because when you do live streaming from your phone, the windows, the little chat messages, they stay up for like five seconds and go away, and I don't like that. I see Blaze the motherfucking motherfuckers in the chat. We're going to go ahead and move this on over a little bit further here. Like so. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. So I'll just use... Check that out. Yeah, that's, that's, that's some good setup right there. Look at that. I'll use the computer screen to keep up with the chat. And let the uh, phone serve as the camera. I like this little setup. See, I kind of stopped doing live streaming because it was uh, it was becoming a little bit of a chore for me. Like live streaming was like hosting your own radio show, and it was becoming too much of a chore for me. That I didn't want. I didn't want a radio show. You know what I mean? I wanted to just kick it with the chat. And the last few live streams. Shaggy Matt 92, we got Spooky Tuesday, we got J Town Juggalo up in the high. Blaze motherfucking motherfucker. Cali Green Too Fresh. The AU Stalker. Logan Harp. All kinds of motherfuckers. Where am I? I am in my bedroom. Man cave, yeah, you could call it a man cave. It used to be the office, but uh, it became the bedroom. And now I have a spare bedroom with like nothing in it, which is going to turn back into the bedroom so that I can uh, turn this back into the office. Please, motherfucker, motherfucker, that's what's up, homie. Thanks for liking my Facebook page. Much appreciated. No problem. Um. I had a few things I was going to talk about just to kind of give some just to give some substance to this live stream. What up Arctic Wolf? 17 and in the ha. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. Oh, I know what I was going to talk about. I was going to talk about Zug Island. I've had a few people mention the the Zug Island reviews. Um they are coming. The plan I had was to get all of their albums because they have released a few um, independent rec or independent albums. Like they've released a couple albums independently. The uh, Promised Land Nebula and Promised Land Event Horizon. I hit up um, Joy, I think her name is, their manager, and ordered both of the Promised Land CDs. And like a month went by and I mess I emailed them and I was like, hey, um, is that gonna ship soon? Can I get tracking for it? Never heard nothing. And then finally a few more weeks went by where they said uh, that they were out of the Nebula album and, and gave me an option of having a t-shirt or the Toxicology CD, which I had the Toxicology CD on my list 
of albums to get. So I was like, oh, hell, just send me the other CD. That way I, you know, get that done with. A few more weeks went by, and I'm like, am I ever going to get these fucking CDs? Well, they actually showed up in the mail yesterday, so I did get the Toxicology and the Zug Island Promised Land Event Horizon. You probably cannot see that at all with this lighting. Hang on. I'm watching my shit live so I can see. There we go. Hell oh, yeah. So I do have those albums now, which I wanted to do all of their album reviews kind of in a series, which I'm not going to be able to do that now. So I will probably do a review for Crack Tiles, 333, and Toxicology, and then wait until I get my hands on a physical copy of Nebula to dive into the Promised Land albums, which, I don't know. I would hope that... Uh, maybe eventually psychopathic will pick them back up and back them again and we can see some uh we could see like a box set of all the promised land albums they eventually come out with that would be the shit to me so yeah what up on the motherfucking uh fearless friend fury pre-orders i'm right there with everybody else kind of like what's going on but on the same hand there's enough there's just enough going on to keep me content uh, the Ringmaster double vinyl that just got announced today. I actually hit up my local record store to see if they were going to be carrying it. And he actually, uh, the owner hit me back up and said, uh, no, that, that is a tour exclusive. So I know now, tomorrow night, to definitely scoop up that Ringmaster vinyl. And that will be a future review coming out. I don't know why they would do that. Why would they press up the vinyl and not release it nationally? Why would they only have it on the tour? That seems like a bad move to me. But then again, maybe vinyl's not... Uh, maybe the whole vinyl thing isn't doing as well as they were hoping. Captain Flannel's in the high. Dustin Orndorff. I'm missing a few people coming up in the chat, man. I am not keeping up at all. I will continue the vinyl reviews. I did, um, I moved my turntable out of the office. It felt like a waste being in my office. So I actually put it out in the living room with my uh, surround sound and the TV and everything like that because I mean, what's going to be the ideal time that I'm going to be like, hey, you want to listen to a record when you're playing a board game or when you're playing a video game, right? Which we play our board game, we play into the Echo side and everything in the dining room, which is right there next to the living room, same way with video games. So I ended up moving my turntable, so I got to figure out how I want to do the whole preview part of my vinyl reviews. Shouldn't be too hard. I mean... Yeah, it's a little bit of a cluster on top of the TV, but hopefully nobody will be paying attention to the clusterfuck that is there. Kelly Green, Kelly Green says he can't wait for those reviews. I've been wanting to drop them, but I wanted to do them all in a row. But I guess I gotta wait now until I get my hands on Nebula. Thought about hitting somebody up on either Psychopathic Traders or the Psychopathic Museum be like, hey, who has a copy they're willing to sell me? I just like physical copies. Even though there literally, literally is nothing to this packaging. It is typical cardboard sleeve. The disc comes out and even I was examining the disc earlier and it's totally just a sticker slapped on there. So, I would like to see Psychopathic pick these guys back up and re-release the Promised Land albums with proper packaging, maybe go through and remaster it a little bit. That's something I would like to see in the future, because uh, Zug Island has a fan in me now. That poster is lit. Hell yeah, dude, you should see all the posters. Here. I'm gonna take you guys for a little ride. We'll just we'll examine all the posters. How about how about that? Uh, so we got Carnival Carnage. For whatever reason, I have them completely completely out of order. I stuck 
Ringmaster up in the corner here. He can't fucking see him with a shit. I put Ringmaster up here in the corner. And then Mighty Death Pop right next to him. And then we go Carnival Carnage, Real Box, Great Malenko, Amazing Jekyll Brothers. With the Wraith then on over on the other side of where the Ringmaster is. That you can barely see. Yeah, the Wraith is the furthest away from the black lights, so it gets like the least amount of shine. So, hell yeah. I just need that Bang Pow Boom black light poster, and then all they gotta do is make one for the Marvelous Missing Link, and I will be one happy camper. Well, I guess they'd have to come up with uh, Fearless Fred Fury now, too. <laughs> Sleeping Skeleton, Fearless Fred Fury is just 17 days away. And yet there still is not pre-order packages. I don't know what the hell is going on. I will I will gladly say Psychopathic's dropping balls, man. Left and right. They're just dropping balls. Um definitely. Emini's greatest strength is Psychopathic's greatest weakness. And that's promote and that's get the shit out, man. Take care of business. I'm hoping we'll get the pre-order soon. I mean, honestly, I'm not even going to lie to you. I really don't care if there's any special packages, even if it just it's the CD itself. I just want the CD itself. I want to know, hey, for sure, it's coming out. There's no delays. The album will be out October 26th. And putting out a pre-order kind of confirms, all right, this is it, man. It's coming out. Of course, I guess pre-orders don't guarantee that it's coming out on time. I mean, clearly that's been an issue in the past. Callie Green says might be able to get one in the museum. I will head to the museum then because my original post for Nebula was in Psychopathic Traders and that was where everybody told me. I'll hit up Joy. She's the one to talk to. So, um, Zug Island's original concept was Violent J is a big fan of the rock genre. And he met Mike P who plays guitar and I guess knows how to play different instruments like that. That was where Violent J got the idea to do a rock project. And originally it wasn't going to be what it became. It was just going to be J and Mike P. But I don't know the full story. So I'm probably butchering the shit out of this. I did go listen to the final chapter of the Behind the Paint audiobook. Because I knew he, he talked about Zug Island in that chapter. And I was very curious to hear about it now. Um... But basically then from there they decided that the vocals weren't quite what he was wanting or hoping for until uh, Mike P introduced his friend G-Man aka Sin and and from there you know Zug Island became what it is now so Violent J wrote all the lyrics for Crack Tiles because they had already written that album they had already I guess J had already I guess recorded it but they just had Sin go back over all of the vocals with his, you know, as far as every tone, every way that everything was sang, he just went right back over and did it like Jay did. And I guess that's how the album meshed so well together. So, um, Crack Tiles was the only one fully written by Violent J. I know on Toxicology, the three bonus songs were written by Violent J because that was when they kind of reunited. But uh, 333 is written by Sin music written by Mike P so I don't know I think it'd be cool to actually see Violent J kind of rejoin the group in the way of being the songwriter because I'm loving what he's doing so I'm gonna catch up with the chat because I know it's been going like crazy do I still listen to the Mighty Death Pop I haven't in a while I haven't in a while I won't lie it's been a while
The faces look more aggressive. Uh, I really only have the Mighty Death Pop to go by looking at these posters. I would say they're about equal, really. They've always kind of had those sinister looking teeth. I think they're about equal as far as wicked looking or aggressive looking. I want that Flip the Rat EP too. And I, I'm I'm calling it now, like, I forget the name of the guy who, who said it, but I'm, I'm calling it now the disc will just be flipped over and that's the EP. <laughs> Fred Durst put a hold on the Fearless Fred Fury pre-orders. I don't know. I, I hear a lot of people saying that uh, that it was a great uh, marketing scheme because if you literally if you used to go Google now ICP and Fred, one of the things that surely should pop up is the name of the new album, Fearless Fred Fury. It's genius when you think about it. Took three months to get Ouija shit out, so. <laughs> would I be upset if the date gets pushed back? Yes, I would. And the reason I would be upset is because it would kind of ruin the trend right now of getting a new ICP album every three albums. And I'm already upset because Fear Factory was kind of following that same trend. They released Mechanize in 2009. They released the Industrialist in 2012, and then they released Genexus in 2015. So it's like, here's 2018, where's a new Fear Factory album? And I went to their Facebook page, nothing. I went to their website, nothing. There's no hints or mentions about possibly being in the studio. So I was kind of let down on that one. And um, so yeah, if, the, if this album gets pushed back, it'll kind of break that streak. I know it's something so stupid, it's like, the album's coming out, does it matter what year? Does it matter that it comes out this year or 2019? And I guess in my head, I think of it like if it comes out in 2018, you could almost just say the next one should come out then in three years. It should come out in 2021. But I don't know. I mean, according to what they said in the seminar, they were going to focus more on ICP, but they've said that shit before, and they still haven't. So I don't know. I'd like to see him kick it back into high gear, you know? Be what they were 20 years ago with projects. Be on point with it all. Yeah, Zug Island writes their own stuff now. But I know on Toxicology, they did do the three bonus songs with them being written by Violent J. I'd be okay if, if J went back to writing for them. Not saying that... that that sin's no good at it because actually uh, Twilight Zone off of Nebula is my shit. I love that jam. I have I actually had to download Neb Nebula, so yes, I have listened to it. I just would like to own it physically before I review it. So. Yeah, they are, the Blacklight posters are absolutely fresh. I used to have a couple Twisted ones too, but I, I sold them during last year's fiasco. Um, as of yet, I, ha I don't regret doing that yet, but ultimately, I, you know what? I don't regret it. I don't regret selling them because of simply this. I decided to downsize my poster collection to just the Joker cards. Um, well, aside from the one Chaos comic one that I have. But I decided to downsize my poster. I even sold my Dark Lotus posters. And that purely was, again, because I wanted to keep just the Joker cards. I feel like they're worthy of being a poster, if that makes any sense. They're just so badass, you have to have them in a poster. There we go. I'm going to turn it just like that. So... Uh... Uh, the joke idea that went off of Shaggy's head. Yeah, Fear Factory is the shit. Obsolete is the shit. I would, I'm not going to say Obsolete's my favorite, because it's not. I definitely, it's. 
let's see, if I had to rate, if I had to rate them in order, uh, it's almost my least favorite, but not quite, but that's, that's not really saying much, because I do like all their albums a lot, um, Archetype is my favorite album, just simply because it was the one that got me into Fear Factory. And surprisingly, a lot of people don't like Transgression, but Transgression is one of my favorite Fear Factory albums. Just because when you when you listen to that entire discography, Transgression is so unique in its sound that I like that. It needs to be pushed, it's okay, I'd rather have it how it's supposed to be than fucked up. I would agree with that, but I'm just saying, for whatever reason in my head, it's like, no, it has to come out this year, because every three years they put out an album. Do I still listen to Blaze? Before he left, or before he left Psychopathic, I was never a huge, huge Blaze fan. He doesn't see a lot of rotation for me. I do like his music, it's just, he's not my go-to music if that makes sense he's not the one I wake up like oh man I just really want to listen to some Blaze he usually gets overshadowed in my own head of what I'm in the mood for Yo, Crusader Gamer! Fucking ha! You probably should have stashed your DL posters. They could have been worth more a few years down the line. Probably. Honestly, I I might have one still. I might have. I might have forgotten one of them. I've actually never listened to Soul of a New Machine, but from what I understand, it's the really, really, really heavy shit that they've done, and I'm not a big fan of heavy, heavy, heavy shit like that. It actually took me a while to get into Demanufacture. When is the next Sinker Float? Sinker Float won't be back at least until next year. I just, I've been staying away from pop, and I've been trying to watch my sugar intake, which I haven't been doing very well this year as it is, so um, doing a float that basically combines what I've been trying to stay away from with high levels of sugar, I wasn't too keen on bringing that series back, but I know it's a highly demanded one, so it'll probably come back next year. When I do do it next year, though, it won't be an every week kind of thing like it used to be. I'll probably do one once, maybe every few weeks. That way I can actually do the float and have a few weeks to kind of just not have pop and not have the ice cream. Give my give myself that chance to go a little bit without having it. So if it does come back, and there's a good chance it will come back, it'll come back next year, but not as frequent as it used to. Yeah, I know. Uh, Homer's Radio. I reckon you're, uh, you're Brandon, right? From 20 and 17. You got that, uh, you got that uh, Bang Pow Boom Blacklight poster I want. But I definitely would love to see a Marvelous Missing Link Blacklight poster. They really need to bring the Blacklight posters back. I think they're the shit and they're very highly sought after. I had to get mine from blacklight.com. Actually, I got them a little over 10 years ago now because I got them in the summer of uh, 2008. What is my favorite underground album? So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming we're taking away uh, Psychopathic Records. I'm going to go ahead and pull away Magic Ninja Entertainment on that one. Like, can you narrow, can you refine that for me just a little bit? Like, does it have to be off of the major independent labels? Is that what you're more so looking for? I want to know specifically what you're looking for when you say favorite underground album.
What up, Wolf Jester? This is your first live stream that you've ever caught on my channel. It's because I haven't done one in a long time. I used to do them every month and then I just stopped. I don't know. I'm, I'm very weird. I'm kind of like the outcast YouTuber because everything that the major YouTubers are doing and that they're doing well, I, I'm doing the opposite. Like when live streaming was really definitely taking off and becoming a thing, I stopped doing them as much. Uh, everybody else has merch. I don't. I'm actually, uh, I've been in the talks with Coma Black about doing some designs and he hit me up with a bunch of dope ones already. So it's looking like merch might be coming a new thing soon. I may have some t-shirts available. Just kind of my way to help, again, fund the, uh, the giveaways because I only got one patron right now on Patreon and, uh, it's not enough to, to support the giveaways. So just I'm looking for that extra way of, of bringing that income in so I can keep doing the giveaways. You know what I mean? What is my favorite Ouija Max song? The only song that I liked off of Gutter Water was uh, Bare Hands. That was the only one I liked. The only Cypress Hill I've listened to was um, uh, Hits from the Bong, obviously Insane in the Membrane, uh, Rap Superstar, and I think there was one more. There might be one more. But I will say this, the Fear Factory song featuring Be Real was pretty fucking dope. That was off of Digimortal. Um, I actually had Kid Crusher hit me up earlier this year about reviewing his newest album. He uh, was going to send me a copy, but said he didn't have any more, so he, he asked if I would do a digital, which I should probably respond to him. I didn't respond to that tweet of why I don't do digital reviews or try not to. Yeah, I didn't like I didn't like Ouija. I mean, no hate on him. It's just not my cup of tea at all. So, hey, Kevin Prince, what up? Does this mean the Fago break is back? As of right now, maybe. This was totally a spontaneous one because I wanted to, like I said, I wanted to test the quality of this live stream, see how it does in the dark, using the black light as a little bit of a light source just to kind of gauge maybe what the what the stage lights will do to the focus of my camera on my phone. I want to get a new phone, but that's so low on my priority list right now. But there's a good possibility the Fago breaks will will start coming back more. It won't be I don't know if I'll do the old format where I have an intro and everything cuz I don't want to I don't want to be a radio host, you know what I mean? And, and doing the, the live shows like that, like CPN does, CPN's good at it. I'm not. <laughs> I have a hard time carrying on a show like this. That's why I, I pretty much just try to interact purely with the chat because that's, to me, that's the only thing that keeps my live streams going. That and uh, Meg's all the time over on her channel wants to do live streams and it's like, hey, if you want to do one of us playing a game, I'm down for that. But if you watch when we do those those gaming live streams, I, I totally kind of neglect the live stream and I'm just purely into the game. I just, I don't know. I don't know if I, it's, if I don't have the attention span to carry on a live stream or not. I don't know. Up, skinny penis. <laughs> Any theories as to why no pre orders for FFF? I'm fearing that it's not ready yet. Like, I mean, hell, they were just still recording the album back in July, so maybe maybe they cut it too close and we're not able to get it off to manufacturing in time. So maybe that's what they're waiting for. 
because if they put a, maybe they've learned from previous mistakes and if they put a pre-order up now and they know for sure they don't have the CD or the CD won't be ready, then, you know, they've just kind of done what they've done in the past and they're going to have a lot of pissed off jugglers. Maybe they've learned from that and that's why there's no pre-orders yet. Maybe they're still waiting to hear from the manufacturer, hey, we're good, you can you can go ahead and put pre-orders up. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how that shit works, but maybe that's what's going on. Maybe they're waiting. An ICP blacklight, like an actual blacklight that has like ICP written on it. Yeah, Digimortal is uh is definitely easily in my top three favorite Fear Factory albums. There was one buddy I knew said he didn't care for it. He said he actually hated the album so much he stopped listening to Fear Factory after that. And he had never listened to Archetype. I was like, dude, you gotta listen to Archetype. They they go heavy on Archetype. Favorite Kung Fu Vampire album is Love Bites. That was my first one that I got into, though. So <laughs> that tends to be the the trend. Archetype's my favorite Fear Factory because it was the one that got me into Fear Factory. Uh, Great Malenko's my favorite ICP because it got me into ICP. Now, I take that back because my favorite Twisted album is Wicked, and it was actually Man's Myth that I heard first that got me into Twisted. Um, with Boondocks, well, he just put out the turn Kurt, the, the the Turncoat Dirty album earlier this year. When I, if you guys remember the video I did, the future of Underground Avengers, I had basically mentioned in there hopes of them doing more Underground Avengers, and when I sent out my tweet to kind of promote the video, I tagged Buckshot, Class. And Boondocks all three in the tweet and Boondocks actually responded to it and said that it would probably be another long hiatus because he has other projects he wants to focus on so I don't know if that means new Boondocks album next year I don't know if that means a new Turncoat Dirty I don't know what it means I just know he said he has projects he wants to work on so I kind of hope one of them is the project that he talked about doing with Crucifix years ago I'd like to see that project see the light of day. I've never listened to the Ghetto Boys at all. Um, video games? I do, but again, bouncing back to the whole attention span thing, I can play a video game and within 30 minutes be bored with it. I don't know what happened. I used to play the shit out of games. But earlier this year, I bought the Twilight Princess Legend of Zelda game for the Wii. I played it up until the point where you finally get turned back into, um, if you guys have ever played that game, you get turned into a wolf at the beginning, and at a certain point you finally get turned back into Link. At the point where you get turned back to Link, that's as far as I've played, and the last time I played it was like March. So I don't know what the hell's going on with, with my interest in games. Same way with Yoshi's uh, Island. I finally got a Super Nintendo earlier this year and started playing that game, and then out of nowhere, I just lost interest and stopped playing Yoshi's Island, which is crazy because I was I was wanting to play Yoshi's Island for so long, and I finally got a Super Nintendo again and could play it, and I haven't even beat the game again. Yeah, I know, it's, we'll see, because right now, looking on my actual phone, you can barely see anything, you can you can actually see the backlights in the background, but then looking on my computer, they are very nicely lit up, which, I was using the black lights as a background when I would do my Joker card interpretation videos, and it seemed to be working pretty well, as long as I didn't stand in the way and cast a shadow on the actual poster, so... But everybody, everybody's been saying when I finish doing the first set of Joker's card, which I, I need to do that. I need to finish that series out. 
they were, cur they were curious if I would do the second set of Joker cards, and it's like, yeah, I'm down to do it, but on the same hand, I don't have blacklight posters of the second set of Joker cards to kind of follow that trend. So if I do do the second set, I will definitely have to come up with a different background idea. But I did buy... Uh, Megs bought me a, a, a tablecloth yesterday from Dollar Tree that's like a, a lime green color. I told her, I said, you know, this would make a cheap green screen. So I'm going to toy with that and see what I can do about possibly having a green screen now. Start playing around with that technology a little bit. Strive to be a little bit more like Becklin Menace. What up, Alan the Clown? When do I think Kudu will put out another album? I don't know. It might be a while. He said in his seminar at the Gathering this year that he's just been enjoying being a father right now. He's just kind of living life. So he's he he, he performed two new two new tracks at his on his set at the Gathering. So he's got songs. I just think he's, like he said, he's just enjoying time being a father right now, which I totally respect that. So. Favorite Instant Clown Posse font? Like the style of the name text through the eras. That's tough. That's tough. I really, I really like Riddle Boxes a lot. Because it, it's the closest to like a... I take that back. I take that back. The Tempest. The Tempest was the closest to a carnival style font. So I would say I like the Tempest with Riddlebox being a close second. Thank you. I love those posters. That was it. Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. That was the other, uh... Um... What the fuck am I talking about? That's not Cypress Hill. <laughs> That's the fucking Ghetto Boys. What the fuck is wrong with me? How the hell did I get those two mixed up? You're still trying to get into light? Dude, light is the shit. I'm not gonna lie to you. It kind of... I don't know. It rubbed me the wrong way how much attention... I'm, not, I'm. Let me rephrase that. It didn't rub me the wrong way. It just kind of like... I was just... Uh, I was shocked how much more attention Ouija had at the seminar than Light. Man, Light was the shit. And it was like Ouija was... Had everybody wanting to ask him questions. And he was like trying to deflect. Like, you know, hey, ask him some. This is his seminar too. And I'm like... I guess maybe because I don't really, I didn't care for Ouija, and I love the shit out of light, that I was just kind of like, what the fuck is wrong with this picture? <laughs> I don't know. It was weird. It was weird. I don't want to seem bitter, but... Uh. I think the Wii we have is the second generation. I don't know. It was the... Uh... Like the baby blue colored one that, that Walmart had on Black Friday special back in 2010, I think it was. Might have been 2011. That was when we got it, was uh, Black Friday, so. It's time to upgrade. I've been trying to talk Megs into getting a Nintendo Switch. Especially since the new Pokemon games are coming out on there. But she loves playing Minecraft. I would like playing Minecraft again, but my computer's just too slow. And if we had a Switch, we could play Minecraft together. And then on top of that, she likes the Toad's Treasure Tracker, or she wants to play it. So rather than get a Wii U, let's just go ahead and get caught up to the Nintendo. Whoop whoop, Danny boy! Favorite ICP album? Outside of the Joker cards? I'm going to say Bizarre with the question marks. Because I pretty I already answered my favorite Joker card, basically. 
It's funny, I feel like Light is a juggalo newbie, and that's okay. Ouija, I feel like, been a juggalo for a long time. I'm just not into trap style stuff. It feels played out already. I kind of feel that vibe too about Ouija. Like, you can just tell he's been a fucking scrub for years. <laughs> but, he's just not, definitely not my style. Hey, there's Como. We were just talking about Como a little bit ago. I'm definitely wanting more music from Light. And I definitely hope they put out his album in December. I don't have a PlayStation 4. I have a PlayStation and I have a PlayStation 2. And that is the newest console I have other than the Wii. I'm just not a, I'm not a gamer like that. Favorite ICP outro song. They don't do very many outro songs, though. Ah, uh, or do you talk about like closing song? You talk about like what's your fa what's the favorite? Like for instance, "Pass Me By," um, "Nothing's Left," "Time," "Forever." Are you talking about those kind of songs? Closing songs, okay. Uh, shit, you just made that tough. Because Pass Me By is a favorite. It was the first song that got me into ICP. But there's a lot of damn good ones. Nothing Left is the shit. Crystal Ball is the shit. Die Unveiling is the shit. Forever is the shit. Time. There's so many fucking good ones. That's not even a fair question to put on me. So I'm just going to stick with Pass Me By because it's it's my favorite, absolute favorite ICP song. Crystal Ball, I'll tell you something about Crystal Ball. That song is a fucking lullaby, okay? I, I know I've mentioned this in the past and I'm going to talk about it again. Crystal Ball, there was one time I was sicker than a fucking dog and I was listening to Bizarre. This was like right after I first got into ICP. And I was listening to it and, and it got to the end with the rain falls down. Look at my crystal ball, it's all right. Rain. And they had like the bongos playing, man. That part and it just it just kept repeating, man. That just put me to sleep. So when I did when that happened, I made it a point from that day forward, anytime I had trouble sleeping, I would just put crystal ball on. You know, because it's at the end of the, the album anyways, so uh, you just put the sleep timer on on your stereo or whatever device you're using and uh, just play Crystal Ball and wait for that ending long drawn outro to the track and that shit will put you to sleep, guaranteed. Chat's been moving. Yeah, both bazaars, I would easily say both bazaars are underrated as fuck. What do I do in my spare time? I play a lot of Pokemon Go, and I'm not afraid to admit that. I am a Pokemon Go fucking freak. <laughs> but most of the time, um, we'll play, or uh, we'll watch Netflix, or we'll play Into the Echo Side, or we'll play... I don't know if you guys are subscribed to Meg's channel or not. The uh, link to her channel is in the description. We did a live stream of a new game that we got called um, Monopoly Mario Racer, I think it's called. It's basically, it's Monopoly, but it's themed after Mario Kart. So it's a totally different aspect to Monopoly. So we've been playing that a lot here lately too. But a lot of my nights when I get off work, and I get out of the shower, we'll get something to eat, and we'll just fucking watch Netflix and just chill. So that's basically what my free time looks like on the weekdays. Weekends is a little bit different. We usually go shopping either Saturday or Sunday, and then depending on which day we do or don't do that, we'll also do laundry. I have to take my clothes over to Meg's house because uh, the washer that I have, the CPN is broken on it. 
the agitator, the most important, <laughs> the most important part of the washer, the agitator. I call it the CPN because I mean he's great at agitating people. So uh, because the CPN is broken on the washer I have at my apartment, I got to take all my clothes over to Meg's house and have them washed at her place. And of course the dryer is out too, so I might as well dry them while I'm there, right? So we do laundry. One day we'll do my laundry. The next day we'll do her laundry. And uh, sometimes we'll go visit with family or just go out and play Pokemon Go. Just my opinion, both Light and Ouija are side replacements talent-wise compared to the people on side that were there in the past. Still open-minded about it and my feelings could always change and see that's my thing is is that's why i don't want psychopathic to sign any more artists because their legacy as it stands now is epic epic you think when you think about it when you look at twisted blaze boondocks abk I and mean, when you look at every artist that's come through those doors and left and even take twisted now and I, I'm not trying to say that m &E is only there because of Psychopathic, but you have to admit, m and &E is partially Psychopathic's legacy now. Because that, that label does exist because of Psychopathic Records. Twisted still going under the name Twisted. Blaze is still under the name Blaze. Boondocks is still under the name Boondocks. And when you go Google any of those artists, what's the first thing you're going to see? That they were signed to Psychopathic Records. So... Psychopathic Records or M and E is partially still part of Psychopathic Records' legacy because of where it led. So, Psychopathic Records' legacy is fucking epic as it is, and I don't think I'm, I'm just I'm to that point, and I've said this in previous videos. I'm to that point where I'm okay with them going back to the way it used to be, where Psychopathic Records and ICP are one and the same thing, just because. They've built and done so much, and, and, and years from now, people look back on what they were. It, it was massive, man. They did, they created a, a subculture, and hell, dope. Do I pick up CDs at the store or just online? Primarily online, there is a local record store that I don't visit nearly enough that I should. Um, Probably with Fearless Fred Fury, what I'll do if they don't have any special pre-order packages, I may just hit up my record local, my my record local, local record store, and be like, hey, if you can get this album, I'll come get it from you. That way, you know, I'm supporting you and, and still get what I like. I almost did that with the Tech Nine album, but for whatever reason, I didn't. Uh, I need to start doing that. I need to, because I talked to the owner, and the owner actually refers to me as a uh, Professor Juggalo because. We stood for like 45 minutes one day just talking about ICP. And I was schooling him on everything with Twisted and what was going on. You know, this was last year. I was schooling him on everything that was going on between them and everything. And he's just like, he would like think of an album. He'd be like, what was that one album? And I'd just fire with the name. And he's like, damn, you're just like Professor Juggalo. So, I mean, I talked to the owner like that. So, I don't think I'd have any issues just being like, hey, can you get this CD? Or, hey, will you order this CD and I come get it from you? Cause that was there for a while that was how i was getting my vinyls that's where i got my carnival of carnage vinyl is where i got my fuck the fuck off motherfucker vinyl it was where i got my uh did i say great malenko yet it's where i got the great malenko vinyl i got them through him so trying to support him while still getting my my shit Damn, I'm like way, way behind here. Joke Your Mind is another another great closing song. There's just too many of them. Yeah, When I Get Out, I do love When I Get Out. What was my favorite sinker float? the best float i've made yet and i'm gonna i'm gonna let you guys in on this now because it is totally a fall flavor 
okay? Go get yourself a bottle of candy apple, and you're going to head to um, Walmart or any grocery store you have that carries the Blue Bunny brand ice cream. And you're going to get the Caramel Craze ice cream. And that, mixed together, tastes like a candy apple, a caramel candy apple sucker. That shit was the shit. So, go get that. Go try it for Halloween, for fall, whatever. Great flavor, great float. Mario Monopoly is the shit. I can't find it. Um, check your Walmart. That's where we got ours. Do I think goth girls are hot? It really depends. It really depends. Too much. I'm not a big fan of makeup. I don't like when girls cake their faces in makeup. So, depends on what, what kind of goth we're talking. Are we talking white-faced, black lipstick, eyeliner? You know, are we going to that extent or just wears a lot of black black nail polish I'm, I'm okay with nail polish yeah the cpn is broke <laughs> you guys can use that too you guys can go tell them i said that i don't care it's funny my cpn is broken i said that to megs and she's like what i was like my, the cpn is broken the agitator favorite show that i've been to as of right now my favorite show is the um, American Psycho Tour because I loved I loved the fact that it had a theme to it. I love the themed tours like that. But what made the American Psycho Tour so dope for me was the fact that it was the first time that I got to see Twisted live, and it was the first time I got to see the the roster like that together. I mean. ICP, Blaze, and Twisted together on tour. That shit was dope. I never thought I would see it because at that point in time, like, Twisted and ICP were not doing that much together. Um, you think about it. The last song they did together was Monster's Ball for Independence Day in 2007. And then it was like each of them was putting out albums, but they weren't. they didn't do a track together. And I'm like, what the fuck? And then suddenly, you know, Cryptic Collection 4 came out at uh, Gimme More, which had ICP and Twisted. And I was like, finally, they fucking do a track together again. And lo and behold, they announced the American Cycle Tour, ICP and Twisted. And I was like, as soon as they announced that tour, I told Megs, I was like, we're going. I said, because they may never go on tour together again. Next thing you know, a year later, Twisted leaves the label. And there you go. Everything has happened that has happened. <laughs> You think I should sign with Psychopathic? I... What what would I even be? They're, you know, because they're... I mean, I could help brainstorm ideas for games or projects or different shit like that, but I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just... Maybe it's just me being hard on myself, but I don't, I don't think I have enough talent to, to be worth going to Psychopathic Records. Exactly. Psychopathic has nothing to prove at this point. Oh shit, we'll see. Kevin's Kevin's confirming it for me. He says, no DC, and I'm a Twizzler saying this. m and &E is completely Psy Legacy, not just part of it. Well, there you go. I didn't want to give full credit to Psychopathic. Favorite radio station? I don't listen to the radio. Um... When I do listen to the radio, where I'm from, without giving away my location too much, 98.5 plays a lot of hard rock. And that's the closest to enjoyable music that I will listen to on the radio. Thank you, Doug. It 
jumped on me. I hate it when it does that shit. Okay, what up, Echo Side Fiend? That's my boy right there. Meg's actually used a box that you sent me to, to pack stuff up in, and I, I was sitting there looking at the shipping label, and I'm like, hey, the homie sent me that. I was like, that's a big-ass box. What the fuck did he send me in that? And I remember it was the Oracle of the Three Rings you sent me. I'm like, ah, oh, that's what it was from. Yeah, no pre-orders. No pre-orders yet. Hey, if it comes out in time, yes. Fearless Fred Fury will be the reason Halloween will be lit. What up, Ninja? Yes, you will see me. I That's basically why I'm doing this stream, to just see how well my phone does. Because for whatever reason, I wasn't happy with the quality from the uh, ICP seminar at the gathering. It was kind of fuzzy. So I want to make sure my camera's going to do decent quality and make it worth live streaming while I'm there. Because I may just live stream rather than film. But then again, this camera... This camera right here gets great, great quality footage. So I don't know. I may just take the camera. I do not like wrestling. I watched it for a very short time when I lived in New Zealand. Because I was bored. <laughs> it was something to do. I remember that. Jamie Madrox did look like he was on meth. And I remember those were the rumors for so long. And then the most recent one with Jay losing all his weight. Everybody's all like, oh, he's on drugs. Or, what was it? it was, he was pill popping. That was the, the rumors going around. <laughs> Echo Side Fiend's got a few videos that he'll be doing in the next week or two one for his channel one for carnival spirits about damn time somebody does something on carnival spirits man i was uh i was gonna start a petition for them to change carnival spirits name to the every saturday afternoon podcast because that's like the only thing that channel does man i'm just pulling your guys's chain i'm sure you guys got something i've I was just talking to Callie Green the other day. I was like, I'm I'm sure you guys are gonna just unleash a plethora of fucking content. He has got all these members now. Cause he tried to talk me into coming back for backwards and I'm like, ah, I'm good. The fuck ever. I don't know, we were talking internet radio shows. Radio with Bob. We should do a new collab tomorrow. Well, I will tell you, uh, Megs has to work until four thirty, so we won't even we won't even hit the road for Fort Wayne until probably closer to five. So we will definitely be a little late getting there. And I know I'll, I do want to see Clownvis this time. I missed his set at the gathering, so I do want to see Clownvis. Um, so unfortunately we're not going to have a lot of free time because in the same kind of situation we're going to have to head home right away because she's got to work tomorrow morning I requested both days off so I, I'm, I'll i be paid tomorrow and Thursday holy shit it's going on fucking 11 o'clock I gotta get going to bed because uh I gotta get up early to take Megs to work. 
Slipknot is feuding with ICP over what? That's news to me. forgot that I was uh, editing a video. Peace. Actually, I'll probably get ready to end this live stream myself because I got to get going to bed. So, um, yeah, Zug Island reviews coming soon. Um, merch, very possibly coming soon. Coma's working on some designs for me. Um, so when I do come out with t-shirts I'm actually gonna split my profits from any of those sales I'm gonna give um, a portion of it to coma for doing work for me coma does so much shit so much uh, graphics I want to give back to him because he, he's he's put out so much dope shit he's the one that designed my channel art on my channel so this is something I want to head up with him and give him give back to him with the merch and then use my share to to help fund the giveaways so that's very likely coming in the future and uh yeah most likely be live streaming tomorrow night if not you can look for some footage good quality footage with the cam so i'm gonna head off here get going to bed and uh we'll see you guys later thanks for watching y'all shout out to everybody up in this chat right now. Love you guys. You are the shit.